So these past few weeks have been very crazy. Uh, I'll get to that in a moment. First off, just getting this out of the way, uh, just to log this. I think last Thursday, I was able to experience the vibrations. Last Thursday or Wednesday, sometime last week. Um, basically, I woke up in the morning, I was able to go back to bed and uh, purposely induce the vibrations through a certain process that I'll get into later. But after inducing the vibrations, I basically ended up in another fun little alternate reality where I didn't know that it was an alternate reality because I guess I thought it was real. And that brings me to another lesson that I need to learn right now. It's that I need to be able to distinguish the difference between what is real and what is alternate. So these last few weeks have been very emotional for me. Uh, I recently lost an uncle. Uh, I loved him very much. He was kind of a mentor in a way. He and I would have a lot of conversations about the metaphysical. He was one of the first family members that I was able to actually open up about metaphysics, psychic abilities, uh, ancient technologies. He loved ancient technologies. He loved theories about aliens and planets and how certain things got to certain places. And he would always talk about his beliefs in those areas. He told me a lot about our family and, you know, I was really close with him. This has to be the closest person that I've ever been to who's passed away. So recently there have been a lot of emotional ups and downs. My uncle actually lent me this camera, the one that you see behind me. This is a really nice Nikon camera and he lent it to me and uh, I said, hey, Uncle Don, I'm not going to be using this. Like, this is a really nice camera. Uh, I don't want to ruin it or anything. And he says, I don't use it anyways. Just, just take it. Just borrow it. Give it back to me later. Uh, unfortunately, before I was able to give it back to him, he passed on. And when he passed on, he actually left behind a ton of camera gear. So... Uh, perhaps I'll be using that in these future videos. His wife, who uh, passed on a lot earlier than he did, actually left behind a lot of crystals as well. So now they're within my possession. I decided to take them because he was going to get rid of them anyways. He said he had no use for them. He didn't know what to do with them at the time that he was alive. So this recent experience is very interesting. Everything leads up to this certain experience. So during the weekend on the 12th, I was having another one of those archetypal dreams that are recurring. Usually I'll find myself in an interesting place where I'm moving up and down these stairs or I'm at a building and I'm trying to climb to the top of the stairs or I'm trying to get down the stairs and I don't understand what it means. But in this dream, it was nighttime. I seemed to be in this sort of uh, gym-like place where people were exercising and working out. So there was a point where I was going up the stairs and I reached the second level. And there was someone following me, behind me. Uh, he had this bag for me. And for some reason in the dream, I felt very grateful that he gave me this bag. There was something inside of it. I don't remember what it was. But I remember feeling grateful because I didn't expect him to do it. I was just like, thank you so much. Like, uh, I don't know what I would have done without that or if, if, if I left that behind. So for some reason, this is the moment that I start to become more lucid that this is a dream. And then while I'm lucid, as I turn to the side, that's when I see my uncle. I see my uncle sitting there. And I am so happy to see him. I go up to him and I say, Oh my God, are you okay? Like, how are you doing? Because, because, you know, he's passed on. I don't know if I was talking to him or not. And, well, something unexpected happened. He just looked at me kind of 
blank faced like he didn't show much emotional expression and all he said when I asked him how he was doing was okay <laughs> that's it I then had a conversation with him and the conversation went on for a bit of a while and I think I was basically asking him how he was doing and the overall tone of it was that he was doing good he was doing okay but it seemed like there was a piece of him missing it felt like there was a part of him that wasn't fully conscious or wasn't fully there and I didn't understand it at the time so the conversation's a bit long and this is when I start to think to myself shit this conversation's really long uh, am I going to remember this and then that's when I notice him right next to my uncle to the side of my uncle is this incredibly tall man he was african-american he was about eight feet tall he was just towering and then i just got the brightest smile i was just like oh my god like i said to him are you his spirit guide and he just looks down at me and looks at me and he just says yes for some reason in that moment i get this feeling I get this feeling that, wait a second, I shouldn't just trust my eyes. I need to feel him out to see if he actually is what he says he is. So I actually say this out loud to him. I say, how do I know you are what you say you are? And while I'm talking to him, I actually notice to my side, there's another African-American man just standing near me. Uh, I think he was wearing like a red shirt, kind of baggyish jeans curls kind of going down a little bit of quick backstory i don't know why but during my dreams in certain dreams when i become lucid i'll notice certain dream characters right there are certain dream characters that are just i can tell that they're just dream characters they're just part of the dream but there's certain characters that when i look at them they have a higher level of consciousness about them there's something about them that seems a lot more aware of their own existence and something about them that seems very aware that they're within my dream. It's like they entered my dream or maybe, maybe I was visiting a realm where there were actual conscious beings existing within that realm. But anyways, most of the time when I see these people, they're African American. I don't know why. But the thing is, when I see these people too, I feel like I've seen them before. I feel like I've known them before. I feel like, no, even, yeah, in my previous dreams, I would go up to them and I'd say, how have you been? It's been a long time since I've seen you. And the thing is, even though logically I haven't seen them before, even though in the physical realm I haven't seen them before, Emotionally and spiritually, it feels like I've known them before. It feels like I've bonded with them before. There was actually another dream that I experienced where I was in some sort of locker room. I was looking in the mirror, and I hope this doesn't sound too weird, but when I was looking in the mirror, I was African-American, I was black. And as I was looking in the mirror, I was very light-skinned. And as I was looking into my eyes, there were this beautiful light green color. And I, I think I had these really short curls on top, kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. Maybe it was like a blend of like black, blonde, like however I decided to style it at the time. But as I was looking into the mirror, it was weird. I was just thinking, this is me. Which is strange because like, if this is just my subconscious mind, how did that get ingrained into my brain? that I'm black. Because most of my life, I haven't even really thought about that. It just randomly came up one day. So anyways, these two people standing next to my uncle and standing next to me, my spirit guides or these people watching over us, whoever they were. So getting on with the story, I remember asking this tall man, 
how do I know what you say you are? So I hold out my hand with the intention of doing some sort of energy exchange just to feel this guy out, just to see if he is what he says he is, just to see the intent behind him. But all he does is look down at my hand, he puts his hands up kind of in a take a step back motion. I don't entirely remember the exact details of the conversation, but basically the whole context of it was, he said, whoa, like we can go back and forth on this. And by back and forth, he means some sort of energy exchange. We can go back and forth on this, but it wouldn't be useful. And then he says, all I can say right now is that you have a lot to learn. And what I can do right now is help you with the next lesson. So this is the interesting part. The interesting part happens when he reaches out and he grabs me. He reaches out and he picks me up. He just picks me up over his head. And I'm just in the air. And as he's lifting me up, I look down to see my uncle. And he's not really paying attention to what's going on. He's not really paying attention to uh, much of anything, actually. I am now at the top of this giant's like arm span and then now he throws me down to the ground hard. And I don't hit the ground, I don't hit the floor, I just kind of sink through it and then BAM! I hit the vibrations. That has got to be one of the craziest ways that I've ever hit the vibrations. Just having this giant guy throw me down to the ground just for me to sink into it. I sink into the floor, everything kind of just turns black and then BAM! Vibrations. So then I'm in the vibrations and I'm revving the vibrations up and down as usual and I find myself in my room. I find myself in my room, uh, I look around. The outside through the windows indicate that it's nighttime and my room is lit. And for some reason, because it's hard for me to distinguish between alternate reality and actual reality, I wasn't able to tell if I was actually in the astrals or not. So in whatever I was experiencing, I closed my eyes and I kept trying to induce the vibrations again. And basically through a lot of revving and just sitting in my bed, uh, not much happened. And moments later, I woke up. Moments later, I actually woke up into reality. So this was crazy. This was interesting. After I woke up into reality, I thought to myself, first off, that was really fucking crazy. Second off, there really is a lot for me to learn. I don't know if these people are my actual spirit guides or not. That was one of my concerns. But the thing is that being in their presence, there's no malicious intent feelings. There's no darkness that I feel from them. I guess the reason why I asked if he was what he said he was in the first place was just because I didn't want to trust my eyes. But in my experiences with any sort of negative entities or shadow beings or whatever you want to call them when they're in my dreams, uh, usually I can feel some sort of negativity or some sort of darkness emanating from them. From these people, nothing. Nothing bad at least. So yeah, it looks like right now, the thing that I need to learn the most right now is to distinguish between alternate reality and actual reality. So next time I experience the vibrations and after the vibrations subside, I'm just going to assume that wherever I end up, I'm going to assume that it's actually the astrals that I'm experiencing. And then from there, I'll just carefully examine and I'll carefully scrutinize whatever I'm looking at just to see if I'm actually in an alternate place or if I'm in the astrals or whatever. About my uncle though, he didn't seem to be fully there and I wasn't sure what was going on with him. Now, if what is happening to him is exactly what I think is happening to him, then he's going through the stages of becoming aware that he's moved on. So Tibetan Buddhists believe that after one has died and moved on, the state that you're in in the afterlife is very similar to a dreamlike experience. Everything that you experience is very dreamlike. And how you experience your dreams in physical reality 
will determine the level of consciousness that you have in the, I guess, afterlife realms or astral realms. So my uncle, assuming that he wasn't too conscious in his dreams, even though he would have occasional precognitive dreams, right now, my uncle is starting to wake up to the fact that he has moved on. And my uncle is starting to become more conscious that, hey, I'm in a totally different reality and now it's time to move on. I have a feeling that I'm going to be seeing my uncle again. I have a feeling that I'm going to be seeing these guides, these people who are watching over me again. Emotionally and spiritually, I want to say that I saw my uncle. I want to say that I spoke with some spirit guides. Logically, I wonder if everything that I'm experiencing is nothing more than my subconscious mind just creating fantasies in front of me. So yeah, anyways, on the brighter note, today's my birthday. I turned 26 today and I want to say I'm old, but at the same time, at least I'm not 30. I'm young compared to 30. I'm young compared to 40. I'm young compared to 50. And when I turn 40 or 50, I'm gonna be young compared to 80 or 100 and so on. Anyways, this pretty much wraps everything up. Again, on a brighter note, I've been making a lot of these uh, sort of necklaces lately, these sort of uh, macrame stone wrappings. And it's been a really fun hobby of mine lately. And uh, who knows, maybe in the future, I might set up some sort of Etsy account and sell these. So anyways, uh, thank you for joining me today. I'll talk to you again soon. I've got a birthday dinner to go to. Peace.